Hey everybody, how is it going today? Happy Tuesday. In this video, I want to talk about the overall market since we have some weakness going on. Then I want to get into some trades that I made and show you some potential trades I see setting up. Now, before I get started, as always, everybody, please remember, I am not a financial advisor. All of this is just my opinion and for entertainment purposes only. Please make all of your own trading decisions. All right, well, on a day like this, we better start off with the market averages. And even though this is kind of a nasty down day, you know, I'm going to start off with the QQQ, which is the ETF for the NASDAQ. Even though this is a pretty nasty looking red candle right here, um, it's only down three, uh, three quarters of 1%. So it's really not all that bad. I usually don't get excited until uh, one of these major averages are down about a percent and a half or more. So I think this is just a, uh, you know, a regular pullback in an uptrend. Trend. It's still above this eight period exponential moving average, which is the moving average that I like to use the most to tell me what trend that I am in. So I don't think there's really anything to get too excited about. It looks like we are off the lows right now. We're coming off it as I'm doing this video. There's still a couple hours left in the trading day. So, um, you know, this definitely could end up really, really uh, much worse <laughs> than where it's at right now, or it actually could retrace up. You know, we'll have to wait and see. But as far as today's price action, not looking too uh, terrible. I know there's some stocks like Tesla that are getting mutilated, or at least mutilated as far as Tesla goes, but um, really not that bad of a day, technically speaking. Now, in the Patreon group, I was watching this level on the QQQs, and I didn't like how um, the QQQs were getting weak right around this area between uh, 397 and 397.50-ish. Uh, and uh, that's why I started... Um, trimming some of my positions on uh, Monday and uh, last Friday just a little bit not too bad because I figured we were probably going to get some down uh, movement in the market and that's what we did we got a hard break of this support area uh, right in the beginning part of the day and you can see um, after ha ever had this big sharp down move retrace back up hit that ceiling and then continued to uh, sell off the rest of the day it's trying to make a little bit of a comeback hopefully it does i do have a couple of hedges on but you know i'd rather see the market go up but let's actually go back and take a look at the s p 500 take a look at the spider see the spider same exact thing you know i'm just going to stick to that 15 minute chart um, but we can see the spider is, is headed towards a critical area of support, and that's going to be right here, right around, let's call it uh, 465.50 up to about 465, uh, call it 466 even, just to um, make it nice even numbers. And I think if uh, the SPY ends up breaking through this resistance area, there's definitely going to be um, some follow through to the downsides. So that's the area that I'm watching on the spider. If you look at the diamonds, which is the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, we can see that um, the diamonds is heading right into that trend line that I had drawn on here yesterday. It already broke this accelerated trend line, which wasn't that big of a deal. This is the one that I am really watching right here. If we get a failure of this trend line, I think there's going to be some more follow through to the downside on the Dow as well. And that's what usually happens when these averages get really close to major support areas. They're usually doing it at the, at the same time. So when you get a break, it kind of drags them all down. But you can see this uh, trend line also coincides with this this support area so that makes this area double doubly important on the diamonds if we can call that area 161.75 to about 162 ish um, these are just you know rough areas on the chart I don't like to look at just one single area right down to the penny I like to look at a price area of support because you'll notice you know they'll come down to that area sometimes they'll break a tiny bit below it and then and move up so it's it's kind of like an area of support not just a single line in the sand but that is the um, line in the sand or the area that I am looking at on the diamonds and if we look at the IWM see the IWM is uh, you know just barely starting to roll over I think it's still probably rather strong Strong and certainly the strongest of all of them that I'm showing you right here. But this is the area that is clearly the area of support, and that is right around uh, call it 240 to 240 50. And um, if we get a break on that on the IWM, we're going to get some more follow through to the downside. So we are right on the tipping point of all of these averages that I'm showing you. So if you know we get just 
one more you know pile of bad news before the market open tomorrow that could be enough to cause some real tech technical damage on these market averages and we could see you know a, a multiple day or even a multiple week decline in the market i don't think this is going to be anything too catastrophic but we are overdue for you know some sort of pullback but those are the areas that i am looking at all right, the first one I want to talk about is Snapchat. And for whatever reason, I have Snap on the brain. This is the third time in the last three weeks I've tried to call the bottom in this stock. The first time I just bought some shares that did not work out. I got stopped out. Second time I bought some call options and I did pretty good on those. I bought them uh, last Wednesday and then I sold them on Thursday. And there wasn't even that big of a move up in the stock, but I ended up making almost triple on that first lot that I sold. And that last lot, I was up, uh, I think, almost five times what I paid. Didn't end up uh, calling the top on, uh, did not end up getting out at the top on those uh, second ones, but, you know, still a pretty nice gain. And yesterday I decided to buy some $55 call options that expire on Friday. And despite this big, beautiful green candle, and I actually got jackpot lucky and uh, bought those options right at the low for the day on the stock. Um, you know, I was only up about 20 to 25 percent, but that is the difference between buying options on Monday versus buying them on Wednesday or Thursday and getting lucky and having, you know, the stock move your way. You can really uh, get some good leverage if you uh, buy them on Wednesday or Thursday and you end up getting the direction right afterwards. Now, that is a low probability strategy. I wouldn't recommend anybody doing that when you're first starting out. You really need to learn how stocks move first. And then once you get good at that, then you can start applying some some leverage with options and I take very small positions on these I don't I do not bet the farm on these uh, option plays because um, they are a low probability but if you do get them right you know they ended up paying off pretty good but you know despite the market being down today snapchat is holding its own so hopefully if the market firms up uh, I think we can might we might get another big update in snapchat and those options uh, should pay off quite nicely I'm still sitting tight in those options so I'm taking a chance with them but judging by the price action i think they're going to do pretty good but let's go to the 15 minute chart and i will show you what i was talking about in the patreon um you can see how Snapchat was starting to make another rounded bottom formation. We had the false breakdown, so I was just waiting for it to break through this resistance area, and it did it right in the beginning part of the day on Monday, and I just happened to call the bottom uh, just about perfectly. It was totally luck. You know, I'm never trying to call anything to the absolute uh, penny. I'm just trying to get in early, and actually, let's go to the minute chart. Let me show you just a little bit closer where I got in at. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Okay, if I zoom in just a little bit, you can see it had this uh, break through the resistance area. Once it pulled back, this is where I put in my option order and just happened to execute it right before it took off. And uh, man, if we can get some more follow through in Snapchat for the rest of the week, these options are going to pay off in a dynamite way. But, uh, you know, just look for this kind of bottoming formation and wait for it to break through the resistance area. And once it breaks through that resistance area, you, get, you know, you got a pretty good chance of catching the beginning of the uptrend. That's what I tried to do with Snapchat. Now for the third time, and hopefully this one pays off really well. But um, I think Snapchat could be bottoming again. Let's get to the next one. And that next one that I want to get into is Smile Direct Club. I actually made an option trade on Smile Direct Club last week and I lost money on it. So I want to do a little bit of a review on it on why I probably lost money. Um, Smile Direct Club, in case you haven't heard, came out with their earnings today and they were down over 20% or I should say they are still down over 20% right now. There's still some time left in the trading day. And um, if you haven't seen those earnings, uh, in my opinion, they were complete utter dog shit. Normally when earnings come out, and they are not so good there's usually a few things you can pull out to make you think that you know there, there, there's some silver linings there and I really didn't see anything with smile direct club so that's why we're getting this big gap down you know you know when usually when stocks have a big gap down like this and you can go look at their earnings report and you know they're uh, projected to grow at like 35 percent and they only end up growing at 30 percent and you know the stock goes down but in the grand scheme of things growing at 30 percent is still pretty darn good but I didn't see uh, anything that got me excited 
with this Smile Direct Club earnings. And that being said, I, I do own a little bit of Smile Direct Club for my daughter in her account. And I was adding just a little bit on this gap down. Even though um, these earnings were bad, I still think Smile Direct Club has a bright future ahead of it. I think this is where, you know, braces for the most part are going to be going in the future. And, uh, you know, I want to get her a small position in this company because I think they could be a good long-term investment. But anyway, getting back to this trade that I was uh, participating Participating in last week that I lost money on. I was looking at this little rounded bottom formation because the stock was moving sideways to slightly up. So I thought there was a good possibility um, this thing was going to have some follow through to this little breakout that it had. But let's go to the 15 minute chart and I'll show you a little bit closer. You know, I'm actually probably going to have to back it out a little bit here, go back in time so we can see what I was looking at. But uh, Smile Direct Club had this nice little rounded bottom breakout. Um, it looked like it was breaking out quite nicely. So uh, once it started to pull back here, this is where I bought those options. But if we walk this thing uh, forward, we can see it failed that support area in a big way. So um, it wasn't worth worth it for me to close out the options. So I just let them expire. You know, I wouldn't, it wouldn't have been worth it for me to pay that commission. And I didn't take a big position, so I just kind of let them expire. But after watching what has transpired in this stock ever since, um, it, I definitely think some people in the know knew that uh, those earnings were probably going to be crap, and they were selling into uh, you know the information that they had. And unfortunately, you know, I ended up buying some options on this beautiful technical breakout, but uh, it ended up failing. I think it ended up failing because people were selling because they knew what was coming. So unfortunately, I got caught up in that one. But this is what it looks like when those trades don't work out. I mean, sometimes there is something coming up like earnings. But, you know, the moral of the story is if you are buying a stock that is breaking out before earnings, that's usually not a bad thing because if people get the information and they break it out, um, usually you'll get you'll usually get a run into the earnings. Now, if it fails right away, that is a huge warning sign. That is a big red flag that somebody on the mountain shooting off flares waving that red flag you know as hard as they can and if you owned a stock right here and uh, you were just in it for the trade not for the long term um, this is a warning signal that you probably should think about maybe closing out that position if it's like a swing trade because if earnings are coming out you know uh, we could be falling off a cliff but i just wanted to go over that uh, smile direct direct club uh, trade because um, this is definitely um you know, was breaking down because earnings were coming, in my opinion, anyway. But let's get into the next one. All right, well, actually, I'm just going to get into some interesting looking charts before I close out the video. Now, I'm probably not going to be taking any positions in these because uh, when the market is doing what it's doing, I want to wait for it to, you know, find a little bit of a bottom and start to bounce before I start taking any new long positions. But, you know, that could happen tomorrow. So I want to be prepared and, you know, get a watch list going. And the first one that I want to talk about is WTRH. And um, WTRH had a very nice move up. Uh, just a few weeks ago, um, Robert from the Patreon actually participated in this one. Unfortunately, I didn't get any, um, but man, I think he made some pretty good money on this one. And by the way, I do have a Patreon, and uh, the link is down there in the description. It is only $10 a month, um, so if you do want to join that and see what we are trading in real time, it's right down there. And while we're on that subject, if you don't mind liking the smash button, it helps out the channel and it uh, you know, tells YouTube that you don't mind seeing this type of content. Um, but getting into this chart, WTRH did have that big move up, but it has been slowly pulling back into this support area and it's getting actually a decent move off of it today. But let's go to the 15 minute chart, take a closer look at it. Let me back it up. Um, you can see this well-defined support area that it just kind of eased into over the last couple of days, and now we're getting a bounce off of it. If WTRH can uh, continue to move sideways and not trade into this support area or break through it, um, and the market shores itself up, and WTRH has another move higher above this little resistance area right around $1.60, call it $1.65, 
If it can do that, I think this is a uh, pretty nice long uh, potential trade that I'm going to have on my watch list. Um, this is all predicated on if the market can find a bottom and start to bounce. You know, I don't want to be taking any new long positions if the stock if the stock market is still in a downtrend because that's just trying to swim against the current. But WTRH is looking pretty decent. Let's go back to the daily and get into the next one. And that next one is Wish. Talked about Wish many times on the channel before, but it looks like it is starting to bottom again. It has been uh, moving sideways to slightly up over the last couple of weeks. And now it is challenging this resistance area and it is breaking above these two moving averages today. So that is a good sign. I think uh, the next um, area is going to be challenging is that 50 period simple moving average right around $5.75. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see if it can break through there. And if it can, I think this could be the start of the next up move in Wish. And let's go to that 15 minute chart, take a quick quick look at what is going on underneath the surface. But you can see this very nice rounded bottom. It's kind of challenged this uh, resistance area a couple of times over the last uh, few weeks. And it looks like it is poised to break above it. And if it does break above it, I think it could easily um, retest this area right up here, right around $6.25. That's a pretty decent move for Wish. Um, if the market does shore itself up, this one is going to be near the top of my wish list for uh, potential longs if that does happen. And let's go back to the daily. And actually, let's uh, take a look at the SQQQ. I have a small position in this one as a hedge for the market. Let me zoom in a little bit closer. But as this started to accelerate away from the eight period exponential moving average, I thought there was a strong possibility that we could get a rebound. And that, of course, was uh, you know just the opposite of what the QQQ was doing. So the QQQ was getting extended to the upside. This is getting extended to the downside. So I bought some shares in the SQQQ and, uh, and um, you know, up a little bit in this on this one so far. Not up a whole heck of a lot. This is just a hedge trade. Just want to make uh, some of that money back if the market does pull back. And then, of course, the strategy is to make a little bit of money uh, when the market does pull back and then to also take advantage of uh, some of the stocks pulling back and adding to long positions. So that's how I like to play these little market pullbacks. But uh, SQQQ is working out pretty decently so far. Okay, everyone, that is all I have for this video, so I'm going to end it right there. But if you have any questions or comments on any of these stocks, or if you have any other ones you want me to take a look at, please leave it down there in the comment section. I will get to them as soon as I can. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching my video all the way to the end. And until next time, take care, everybody.